may be seated. So today as we come together as a family of faith, as brothers and sisters in worship, we begin the journey to Christmas. And on this journey we've named Advent, we're going to go through this season week by week, day by day, looking for ways that we can better serve our Father God in heaven. Looking for ways we can better joyously celebrate the coming gift of Jesus Christ. It was over 2,000 years ago that a young woman and her husband began a journey. They began a journey through hard times, through wilderness, to a town called Bethlehem. And on that journey, I'm sure there were days that they wondered where they were going and what they were doing. I'm sure there were days that everything didn't go as planned. I'm sure there were days that were hard. I'm sure there were days that were long. But in the end, of each of those days and throughout them, they held on to hope. Hope in what they knew was coming. See, Mary knew who the child was going to be that she was going to give birth to. Mary had spoken to the angels, as did Joseph. And they knew in their hearts that on this journey, while it may be tough, that the coming birth was hope. If you'd like to follow along with me today, our scripture comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, starting in verse number 1. This is what is written. He who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord had been revealed. He grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind. A man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom the people hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our sufferings, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray, each of us is turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Let's pray. Dear Father, we come to you today asking that you would open these words of Scripture to our hearts. That Father, reading and teaching on these words, you would help us to go from this place being filled with hope. That as the beginning of this Advent season comes, we live our lives sharing the hope that is in you. We pray these things in your name, Lord. Amen. So we start today by, I think, laying the groundwork for where we are. Before Jesus Christ came, there was no light in the world. In Scripture, all throughout, Jesus is referred to as the light of the world. A light that came, a light that God sent. So before Jesus came, we can make an assumption that there was darkness. In darkness, there is nothing good. In darkness, there is no moving forward. I don't know how many of you have ever tried to walk through the woods in the dark. It's certainly not as easy as when there is light. I know in our, uh, our house, my parents live across the yard, through the woods, there's no creek to go over to Grandma's house, but through the woods. And my kids during the day will have no problem at all saying, we're going to Grandma's house, and they take off through the woods and go. When it's nighttime, it's a different story. When it's dark, the kids will leave and they'll hesitate. They want a flashlight, or in today's modern technology, a cell phone they can turn on and light the path. So we don't have light in the beginning, and I believe that's where this prophecy starts out, that there's darkness in the world. There's darkness all around, but there is light to come. And the but in that statement is the most important part, because God understood this from the very beginning. In John 1, John writes this, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. 
See, in the beginning, Jesus was there. We read Genesis 1, we often forget that. We see God in Genesis 1, 2, it says that the Spirit of God hovered over all that was there. Jesus was in that time. John very clarifies that for us by saying that in the beginning, the Word was with God, the Word being Jesus. And in Jesus, everything was created, and without Him, nothing was created. Why? So that in the darkness of the world, there could come light. We have to understand that today, I think, in the context of where we are in the world as we start the season of Advent. We look around us and we see a lot of darkness around us. We see a lot of places that are <clears throat> absent of Jesus Christ. We see it just recently on the news in Colorado. And somebody, again, took the path of darkness in life. We see it daily <clears throat> as we read the news of the Middle East. We see it as I talked to Iman last week after church. He talked to us about the atrocities <clears throat> being committed against the church in Syria. Darkness. <clears throat> Evil is there. But is that the end? Absolutely not. And that's where we're going to start this season of Advent. <clears throat> is in the hope that comes with light. In our reading today, we start off, it says that the world was in very similar shape that it is today. There were wars. There were people dying over naming the Lord God as their Lord. <clears throat> there were kings ruling countries simply over greed. What they wanted. There were businesses being run in these small towns that didn't care about the effects of the business beside them or the people they served. But only what they wanted for themselves was most important. A.K.A. today. Not as bad today as it was then, nor was it any worse then than it is now. It is the scenario of the world. It is the world without Jesus Christ in the darkness. So we come to our scripture today, and it says in our scripture that he grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract him to us, but nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. So when this prophecy is being told, I'm sure the people are looking at him thinking, well, look, this can't be the Messiah. How can this be the king? We want a Messiah that's going to come and take over and rule. We want a king that's going to rise up tall and be bold. And Isaiah is saying, you're not going to get that. You're going to get a person that's going to come that nobody is going to assume is the Messiah. He's going to be of humble beginnings. He's going to be of humble looks and shape and figure. He's not going to look like anything special that makes anybody recognize him. But he brings with him the light. The light of the world. So we look at the scripture we talk about hope. Where does hope come in to all of this in the scripture today. I think hope comes into this with an understanding of where Jesus comes to us. See in verses 4 and 5 it says this Surely he took up our pain. He bore our suffering. And even though we punished him, we considered him afflicted, we beat him down he was pierced for our transgressions. So we have to look at hope and understanding what Jesus did for us. <laughs> what did Jesus do for you? We look around our lives, and I think we can all say that we understand darkness in our lives. Maybe it's a job that has you down right now. Maybe there's somebody in your family that's ill or sick through the holidays. Maybe there's something going on financially that when you look at it, you just say, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. And then we have a decision. We can make a decision as the world makes a decision and say we don't need that God stuff in our life. We can do this. And the people that say they don't need that God stuff in their lives, maybe they work more hours. Maybe they go to more doctors. Maybe they do other things in their life to try to get past the pain and the suffering. Darkness continues to be more darkness. And then there's the side that our author, our prophet, says, whether you accepted him or not, he came for you. When you beat him down and kicked him and rejected him, 
He went to the cross. When you told him you didn't love him, when you told him you didn't want him, he laid down on the cross and let them drive nails through his hands. When you continue to say, I don't need God, he hung on the cross and said, I love them, so I do this for them. See, friends, this is where hope comes into the world. And I think we have to understand this very basic understanding of what Jesus did to truly understand what hope is. See, when times are good, we forget about hope, but we shouldn't. When times are bad, we look at hope as a fleeing thought in our minds, and we should focus on it even more. Because it was in the worst of times, the darkest part of history, that Jesus came down one night in Bethlehem to a young mother, to a husband that didn't know how to handle this situation, and God said this, is the Savior of the world. 33 years later, Jesus went to the cross. <clears throat> Why? Because he said, Father, if this is the will, if this is how we save our people, then I will go. Jesus voluntarily walked to the cross. And he hung there for us. That is hope. That is a hope that we can focus on in the darkest days of our lives. We can look to the cross and say, God came for me. We can look up from where we are in this season of Advent, no matter where you're at. Some of us may be struggling financially. Some of us may be struggling in health. Some of us may be struggling in family. Some of us may be struggling at work. From all of those situations, we can look to this cross... And we can say, Jesus came for me. And when he came for me, he broke all of the barriers of the world around him. He died on the cross in the morning. Three days later, God had said, death can't stop me. And he ascended into heaven. And doing that, he said that through me, through Jesus Christ, through what he did on the cross, you are saved. That is hope. I know no better way to describe it. But in the darkest of our days, when we look at the cross and say, Jesus, help me, he will say, absolutely, I'm there. In the worst of our times, in the worst of our days, Jesus Christ is a light that we can look to. He guides us. He's the light at the other end of that path in the dark woods that we can focus on. And as long as we stay focused on that light, we're going to make it through. See, friends, I know we've all had those dark days. Whether it's figuratively or literally, we've had days that we didn't know which way to go. I'm going to encourage us through this season of Advent to focus on hope. Why do we start with hope? Because I think perhaps it's the one that helps us get started. It's the one that helps us get up and keep moving. And we're going to talk about joy. We're going to talk about love. We're going to talk about faith. We need to have hope. We need to have hope that tomorrow is perfect because God designed it. We need to have hope that we're going to get through all of today because Jesus Christ is leading us on a path. We need to have hope that throughout this season of Advent, people's lives will be changed, evil will be conquered because Jesus Christ is alive and he's leading the way. So we start with hope because I think it's a foundation for us to grow on. And when we have hope, then we start to understand love. When we have hope, we know that we have faith to rely on God. When we have hope, there's no reason not to have joy. Because we know that Jesus Christ has conquered all and loves all and stands on the throne above all. So friends, today as we start this season of hope, I would encourage you to do a couple things. Number one, live this season of Advent knowing that hope is all around us. Well, how do you do that? Well, when you get to work in the morning, <clears throat> find that person in your office that is always having a bad day and walk up to him and say, Merry Christmas. Have a blessed day. When you get home from work and things aren't quite right, maybe dinner's burned, maybe it's not ready, maybe the kids are running around the house destroying things, Instead of getting down, put a smile on your face and say, you know what? In God's plan, none of this is that big of a deal. 
and I hope that God is going to When we go out about our days shopping, whether it's in grocery stores or it's in that one line of Walmart that's open when there's a hundred people standing there waiting to check out, take that time to share hope. So when people around you smile, don't be afraid to say Merry Christmas. Don't be afraid to say God bless you. Don't be afraid to tell people Jesus Christ is alive. Share hope. Friends, today Isaiah comes to us and at the end of this, I believe he gives us the greatest hope of all. He says in verse 6, We all like sheep have gone astray. Every single one of us has left the path that Jesus has laid out for us. Each of us has turned our own way. But the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Jesus Christ, because he loved us, because he is hope, took our sins, took our pain, took our suffering, and he said, give it to me. I've got it. And because of that, we have hope that Jesus Christ is alive, that he is the king of all kings, and that in him we are saved. Let's pray. Dear Father, we come to you today and pray that you be with us and guide us to... In your time, in your hands, in your love, you would pick us up and carry us. That, Father, in you we would find the hope of the world. That in you we would be saved. Father, as we begin this season of Advent, as today is the first Sunday that we mark the beginning of the Christmas season in our church, that, Father, from this day forward, throughout at least these four weeks, we would live with eternal hope. That when days aren't going as they should, when lines are too long, when when stuff costs too much, when we get sick, when we have concerns, the Father in and through all of those things, our first thought would not be pain, our first thought would not be weakness, our faith first thought would not be giving up. But instead, our first thought would be, Jesus Christ has got this. And we would find hope in you in all things. Father, today we come before you, thanking you for this gift of Christmas, thanking you, God, for sending your Son that we can celebrate eternal life in and through Him. We pray these things in Your name, Lord. Amen. If you